Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of of reason. Today we're continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and the Ukraine. Now, if you were to watch the mainstream media here in the United States, uh, you would think that there are multiple Ukrainian combat brigades at the gates of Moscow. Yes, because of uh, this uh, ongoing Ukrainian operation in the Kursk Oblast, or the Kursk region, you would think that Ukrainian forces are at the gates of Moscow. Now, here in the United States, the average uninformed urbanite has very little understanding of history, very little understanding of past conflicts, and more importantly, very little information or knowledge about Russia. They have no concept, no understanding of just how large the Russian Federation is. Now, in this video, I want to give you a very brief snapshot where you, the viewer, can gain a little bit of understanding the uh, size and scope of this quote-unquote Ukrainian offensive operation. Now look, we also have to go down here to the south where in reality the most heaviest fighting is taking place. The most heaviest fighting is taking place. The Russians continue to advance day in and day out in the south. Since cracking the fortified settlement of Adivka, the Ukrainians have not been able to establish a front line, a defensive barrier against the ongoing Russian operation. Now let's scroll out where you can kind of see and, and get an idea of the size and scope exactly what we're looking at. So up here you have St. Petersburg, you have Moscow, you have the Pacific coast of Russia. And if we go all the way over here, you can see exactly this area here is where Ukrainian formations have crossed the Russian border and are operating against Russian border troops while being subjected to large amounts of Russian airstrikes and drone strikes. But this is it. Again, compare and contrast this blue area and this, this red area is under the control of the Russians. So this tiny little blue area here with the border town of Suja reportedly, possibly, under Ukrainian control. None of that can really be confirmed as of yet. But this is the only settlement in this territory that the Ukrainians are operating in that have been taken by the Ukrainians. Most of this is simply open farmland. You can see it there. And this is the obviously the wider scope of the conflict. So just a tiny piece of the overall theater of operations the Ukrainians are operating in this area. Again, not so much in all probability a designed operation to draw Russian forces away from some of the major areas of offensive operations, but the reality is, again, to draw attention to the media. Have Western media report, hey, this is this is what hap is happening. Now, obviously, uh, there are many reasons why that is occurring. Namely, the big reason is the hundreds of billions of dollars the United States and its Western European allies have provided to the Ukrainian state. Hundreds of billions of dollars. 
Now, what's interesting is there was also a, a recent report that I also want to talk about as well, in which the Western media outlets were reporting the use of uh, French-made hammer precision-guided munitions against targets along the front line. Now, what most news outlets are failing to report in that in that French hammer missile strike was the fact that the MiG-29 Ukrainian aircraft that was being used by the regimental commander of that unit to launch those missiles against Russian targets, that aircraft was then shot down and the pilot, the commander of that aviation, tactical aviation regiment, was killed in action. Now you'll hear about the strike, you'll hear about the use of the hammer missile, but you won't hear about the fact that the Ukrainian aircraft was shot down and the commander of that regiment killed in the shootdown of that aircraft. I believe this year at least two dozen Ukrainian aircraft have been shot down in the air or destroyed on the ground by Russian missiles. And do you ever hear about the loss of a Ukrainian aircraft on the mainstream media here in the United States? No, none. Zero. You will hear if there is an attack and strike and the possibility of a Russian aircraft destroyed on the ground. You will hear about that but you don't get the other side of the reporting in terms of the counter-operations by the Russians. Just don't hear about it. It's like it never happened. But again, the, uh, the Ukrainian offensive. There it is. And let's scroll out into the grand scheme of things in hundreds of miles away, there is Moscow. There is Kursk, the city. And that's that. So you be the judge. Is this an offensive operation that is going to change the course of the war? Or is this simply a media stunt designed to draw public attention towards what will probably end up being a fiasco that will cost the lives of thousands of Ukrainian troops. Have a good day.